All right, time to get on with the show. It's the internet. You're busy. Let's do this. I'm Jeff Grubb from GamesBeat.com. I also run something called Jeff Grubb's Summer Game Mess, usually on my Twitter feed. But I've decided I want to turn it into something more like this pure Twitch streaming show. So I've been doing a lot with my Twitch channel. I've been too busy. I got two kids. You might hear them running around here pretty soon. Uh, and, and so I don't have a lot of time to stream games. And I also think that there are a lot of people streaming games. And so if I can't do that regularly, uh, that's probably not something you're going to come come to me for uh if you have thank you i appreciate that but i figured maybe i could put together something else that might fit well with the twitch channel and that's what this is i think this is the game mess show live featuring jeff grubb hello what is this it's going to be a pretty short program where semi-regularly i come to you with some updates we talk about what is happening with the game mess and if you're not familiar with the game mess, I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, what's happening with the game mess? What is happening in the news a little bit? And that might answer some of your questions. Uh, as far as what is the game mess, if you're just stumbling upon this somehow, uh, this is where I try to keep track of what is coming up in terms of events and in, in the industry, things to look forward to in terms of announcements and when companies are gonna try to communicate with the players. Uh, there, there's not been a really great central resource to keep track of this stuff. So I've tried to do that myself, um, primarily with the goal, with, with a couple of goals. One is to only put stuff up there if I'm if I'm able to verify it myself. Um, and that doesn't always mean things are going to definitely happen. Sometimes these things are uh, things I've confirmed behind the scenes and that means they could still move without companies having to announce it and stuff like that. Um, and then the other goal is to kind of make it fun a little bit, I think. I think that's what I want. I want people to, uh, enjoy this part of, of the coverage of games. Um, I write about the business of games a lot of times. A lot of times that's how companies are getting very creative about ways to part you from your money. And uh, I do find that interesting. I And I like writing about that. Um, but a lot of times that comes to, oh, now companies are, uh, one of the creative ways they found to save money is to treat their employees very badly. And we have to write about that. And we're going to continue writing about that and covering that side of stuff. Um, but there is still a um, an enjoyment to this hobby, and I, this is right here is where I want to focus on that side of things. So, enough preamble. You know, it, it is the internet, and you are busy, and I I might be wasting your time. So, let's get into it. What is happening with? The summer game mess. Uh, we're not going to go over everything here on the list. You know, Monster Hunter Rise. Nintendo's talking about that. They're going to be. Uh, they're going to be. That's their big first quarter game. They're going to talk a lot about that. Um, Paradox Insider, future game show. Uh, Nintendo executes Mario. We'll talk about that a little bit actually today. Um, but stuff like the Paradox Insider slash Game Dev Direct. Uh, th that's for a very specific audience. We don't need to talk about that in a broad video like this. Uh, future games show. This is one of the many sort of. Uh, sideshows that have popped up that t tend to feature a lot of indie games. Uh, once that comes here, we'll cover it on Games Beat. You can find that coverage there. Probably talk about it on the podcast a little bit, but there's not no reason to sort of uh, uh, inflate hype for something like this. Let them c control their own communication. We're just going to put it on the list. Now, one thing that is interesting. This is it's March 9th as as I'm recording this. Um, March 11th is uh, is when I believe that Microsoft will have more to say about the Bethesda Xbox, X, uh, uh, the Xbox acquiring Bethesda deal. Now they posted a blog today. They uh, talked a little bit about it. Um, they are talking in pretty vague terms, uh, but what else should we expect from them? So they already said, uh, Phil Spencer in his blog post said that he's expecting to put more games on Game Pass from Bethesda later this week. I believe that they will announce that on Thursday, uh, but what else will happen that day? Should you expect new game announcements? No, let's, uh, I guess that's another goal of this whole project is um, helping people set their expectations appropriately so that they don't get disappointed when things don't go their way in terms of announcements. Uh, this is not an event where they are gonna talk about Starfield. This is not an event where they are going to shadow drop Wolfenstein 3 as much as I wish they would. This video presentation is, is how I would phrase it, is uh, an opportunity for them to 
answer some questions, get go into a little bit more detail about uh, about how they're going to work together, and really just kind of set a tone. And I think also reassure people who are Bethesda fans. There are a lot of them. I don't remember if you guys remember that that E3 where that that woman was screaming nonstop at the Elder Scrolls Online developers. Uh, there are a lot of people like that out there. People who are really into Bethesda as an entity that makes games, um, and it's like part of their fan identity identity and. And I think that they're going to take this opportunity to reassure those people that Bethesda is still going to be Bethesda. And, and, and how do we know that? Well, let's talk to some of the people at Bethesda about what this transition has been like and what it's going to continue to be like. And my understanding is they've recorded interviews already with these people. They were in Maryland last week filming this stuff, and now they're putting that together. And they should show it on Thursday. Um, I guess what else will be a part of this? Uh, I, it's... It's hard to say. I think that they probably won't talk any more about the exclusivity question, about whether or not Bethesda games will be exclusive to Xbox and not on PS5. I believe that they probably think that Phil Spencer mentioning that line in today's blog post where he said some games will be exclusive uh, to Xbox and PC, uh, I think they will th treat that as, okay, we have answered that question to the best of our ability right now, and let's not create any more wiggle room let's not mess that up anymore let's not confuse that any more than what it is we said what we mean now let's talk about all these other things so i wouldn't expect them expect them to to really talk about that much on thursday <sighs> what else um i think that that probably i mean we'll, we'll see we'll see what they say um i would be looking forward to some you know more bethesda games on game pass we know that that'll be exciting um all right, so then that, that brings us to Nintendo. What's going on with Nintendo? So on March 31st here, I have uh, Nintendo Executes Mario, and that is a reference to Nintendo ending the 35th anniversary of Super Mario Brothers on March 31st and taking down and stop selling and, and, and ceasing the sales of certain games. Uh, Super Mario 35, or I believe the, you know, the, the Battle Royale uh, platforming game should stop operating that day, um, <laughs> which is wild. They are also going to stop selling Super Mario 3D All-Stars. Uh, th there's another, I think there's another game that's not a Mario game that is also not, I think it's that Fire Emblem, uh, that Fire Emblem port of the NES game uh, that they did. All of those are going to stop on March 31st. So um, they did a direct not too long ago but they didn't necessarily talk about uh, what's going to happen in the wake of these things falling off of the eShop um, and, and you know, being pulled off store shelves in the terms of in, in regards to Super Mario 3D All-Stars. So is Nintendo going to talk to us before this date again uh, and, and address this stuff? Um, if, if I knew that for sure, it would be on the list. It would be on the list and we would talk about that more thoroughly. I will say that uh, my understanding is my understanding. The rumblings I've heard, and that is code for rumors. That's code for, I've heard this, can't confirm it. So the rumblings I've heard are that Nintendo probably will have something to say soonish, and it'll kind of involve you know, Nintendo Switch Online and how that, what that might look like. Um, but not on the list for very good reason. Can't confirm that. Not, not sure. Uh, not even sure what that would look like, but I imagine that as we get closer to the end of this, you know, Mario 35th, 35th birthday, um, they will come out and talk a little bit about what's going to happen, not just what's going to happen to the games that are going away. They might they might not address that, but sort of what they are rotating in to like Nintendo, Nintendo Switch Online. Super Mario 35, you get if you are a subscriber to Nintendo Switch Online. Now that's going away. Um, people who might have subscribed for that, like there, those people are going to exist out there. Um, what are you going to do to replace that? How are you going to keep the value up for them? Uh, this is something that, you know, a lot of times we say Nintendo needs to communicate with us. They need to say something. And a lot of times it's important to remember that Nintendo very rarely needs to do anything. They can just be Nintendo and we will show up to buy their games. Um, but I think in this situation, Nintendo does need to say what it's doing because I think it's very important to Nintendo to keep the value proposition of Nintendo Switch Online high and, and at the top of gamers' minds so that people will continue their subscriptions. But also if, if Nintendo wants to expand it in the future and ch change up the pricing model, uh, we have to have a good relationship with this service. And if that starts to falter, which I think it probably already has with a lot of people, uh, that's gonna be bad for Nintendo. They wanna keep that service money coming in. So 
in this situation, I do think they need to. So I still expect us to hear something soon, but uh, don't necessarily go run and write a news story based on these quotes because this a lot of this stuff is, is speculation. And a lot of it, and again, if I knew for sure, it would be on the list. Um, I think finally, before I let you go on this first inaugural game mess show live with Jeff Grubb, uh, let's talk about what isn't here anymore. And that is by the end of March. Uh, that was a reference to Elden Ring. It's no longer on here. Now, the reason I took that off is because it was just simpler than trying to um, string people along and say, oh, okay, well, maybe it's not gonna happen in March. Maybe it'll be, oh, I'll just put by E3 instead. Um, that felt uh, wrong. I don't wanna treat people that way. I don't want treat people to think like, oh, he's just moving the goalposts or whatever. Um, instead, I, I'm, I'm, I am removing it because I am less certain and I'm less certain because I think that the, the leak might've messed things up a little bit. Um, but I still think things are happening. Things are coming together. Uh, and I, and my, the reason I think the leak might have messed things up is I just think Bandai Namco is like cracking down, figuring out where, the, how, how to like adjust the messaging, make sure that they uh, fully understand how the leak happened and then continue down the path toward officially announcing the game. And there's gonna be opportunities for them to do so. Um, if they don't want to do it on their own, which they could do it on their own, but if they don't want to do it on their own, if they want to do it with a partner, uh, June is not that far away. E3 is coming. Um, and I would, I, if I were going to put it on the list, it would, I would say, uh, I would expect it by E3 and no later. Um, as for like the state of the game and whether or not, you know, do we, do we get news by E3 and then the game by the end of the year? I won't speculate on that. I think there's a good chance that game is in a situation where it could launch, but there might they might not be happy with it. And so instead it's early 2022, I don't know for sure. Uh, but Elder Ring still coming, but maybe maybe not by the end of March. And I apologize, this is me saying I'm sorry for uh, getting people's hopes up about that. Okay, uh, let's take a look at the rest of the list, see if there's anything else we should discuss before we get out of here. Uh, Final Fantasy Digital Fan Fest. I, I, who knows if there'll be a lot of news there. I believe this is like a concert series. It's not, I, I don't know, I put the things on the list so I don't have to remember them. Um, June, not E3. Here, let's talk about this real quick, and then yeah, we will wrap up the show. Uh, June is going to be when E3 stuff happens, and I mean E3 type stuff. Uh, I, as far as I know, I think it's still rare that there's a company that has signed up to go through the ESA and go through the E3 officially, uh, go through E3 officially, but I do think that companies are going to try to position themselves around that time on their own, basically going rogue. Um, I, you know, I think we know Sony's going to do that. I think we expect uh, EA to do that. They were doing that before all this stuff with E3 happened. Now, what about Microsoft and Nintendo? Um, Nintendo seems like the most likely one that would go through with the partnership, but if no one else is doing it and Nintendo is like the one that, that needs to do it the least, it might, I, I, I'm very skeptical about that. And I would also expect Microsoft and Xbox and now Bethesda, which will, uh, you know, I didn't mention that, but, they're going to probably have a separate show uh, for E3 around the E3 time, and they will probably want to do that on their own terms without the ESA involved, so that they can position it back to back without having to like try to work inside someone else's schedule and then pay them to for the of like you know the inconvenience doesn't really seem it seems backwards. So for these big companies, especially the big platform companies, it's going to be very unlikely that they are going to sign up to go through E3. Third party party publishers also very unlikely. Uh, that does that mean that we are going to have the exploded spread out game mess mess that we had last year? I think that is less likely, but here's something to keep in mind. If if the show, if a person is like trying to put together their publishing company's big event and they need to delay something, are they going to um you know, try to get everyone all hands on deck to put out this fire so that they can get the show out and on a certain day, or will they just push things back and push things back until they're ready? Um, I think that it's very likely that in, in the continuing work from home pandemic scenario that these companies, when they are faced with a situation where they either they have to cut something off or try to get all hands on deck to solve a problem or delay, especially before they announce a, a date, 
uh, they will just continue to push things out, I think, until they know better. Um, so I, I don't think that necessarily means we're going to get into August and September, uh, but I do think that means some big shows that you might have ex expect during an E3 time might happen late June into July. Uh, and yeah. Um, okay. So I think that's going to do it. Um, Summer Game Fest. It's Jeff Keighley's thing. We'll see how that goes this year. Uh, E3 Digital Edition, June 15th through the 17th. And Tim's birthday. Happy birthday, Tim. Okay, that's going to do it for me. This was a test run. I didn't even stream it live. This was recorded. Let me know what you thought. Uh, let me know if there would be a good way to take questions from you. Uh, you know, at this point in the show, and uh, you know, if you're live here in chat or if you want to send them in for like the next show, um, maybe we could do that. I have a Discord. You could join that, and uh, there's gonna I'll put a, a a special room in there to discuss this sort of thing. Um, and you could give me your ideas. Let me know. Let me know in the comments. That'd be great. This video should be going on YouTube, and I think that's how I will how I'll do it in the future. I will live stream it to Twitch post it to YouTube as a show uh, whenever I do it, and it'll be semi-regular. Okay, that's going to do it for me. Thank you for watching. Have a good one. Take care of yourself. Until next one. Next one? Until next time. Goodbye.